Welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship, we welcome you. We're so glad that you are here. We are continuing in our series, Stories to Live By this summer. We're being led in worship by members of our Youth Serve Our Community team and musicians as well, and it's just a wonderful day to be in worship. So we are so excited you're joining with us. I want to encourage everyone to use the contact form it is pinned right in the comment section. If this is your first time to join with us in worship, we really hope that you'll use that contact form. This is a great way that we can get connected with you, that we can get to know each other. There's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love to pray with you, so please use that today. Please make sure that you put your email address on that contact form so that we can connect you with our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about small groups and service opportunities and worship opportunities and ways to connect together with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. So please use that today. Now, when we do gather for online worship, we covenant together to be a blessing and to participate. Now, what that means is this. We promise that we're going to fully participate in our worship. That means that we're going to turn off other devices and distractions. We're going to focus in because this isn't just a random video that we're watching, but we're worshiping together. So we're going to pray when it's time to pray and sing when it's time to sing and just fully participate in what we're doing. And then we promise that we're going to be a blessing. And that means that in the way that we're in the comments section, the way we may be gathered with other people, wherever it is that we are participating in worship today, the way that we participate fully with our community, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. Thank you again so much for joining with us in online worship, and I invite you now to center in with us as we enjoy together our call to worship. Welcome to worship. Hi, we're the youth of Server Community Week. Please receive this call of worship. This is the day that God has made. We are full of joy! We open ourselves to God's love. We are full of joy! Thank you, God, for everything. We, we are full of joy! Please join us in Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Hello, my name is Tylan and I'm part of the youth group. Please join us in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. Holy God, we are grateful to be together today to worship you. Speak, us, speak to us now that we may be wise enough to hear your, your call. Strengthen us now that we may be brave enough to answer when you call. Guide us now that we may follow where you would have us go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you and respond and also with you. Sure that in the comments with one another, with me and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Addison. Hi, I'm Annabelle. And we are with Youth Serve Our Community Week. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Aria. I'm Kevin. We're from the Youth Serve Our Community Week. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. I'm Chloe. I'm Josie. And we're with Youth Serve Our Community Week. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hello. I'm Helen Landris. I've been a member of Douglas Church for many years. I'm celebrating my 98th birthday. No, 99th. On Sunday, I'm coming back to church for to renew old memories. I'm a member of Miriam's Circle and I'm in the sewing group. I've had lots of memories and done my share of working in the church. I was a member of the UMW and president for four years. I was in charge of the kitchen part of the time. And I've worked on the garage sale for 40 years. Peace be with you. I'm so excited because it is time for Small Talk. Our Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. And I want to invite all of the children who are gathered with us in online worship to come in really close to your device and into your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with Small Talk. everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud and Laud's assistant Cohen and we're pretending that we are Jesus's disciples out fishing. Laud had his, has his fishing pole and they've gone out fishing but they're not having any luck. Are you Laud? Any luck? No. No luck. And they felt bad about that. But then oh. Jesus joined them. He joined them and he said, okay, try again. Now, they were fishing with nets, but we're just using a pole. And once Jesus joined them, okay, Jesus, here, why don't you sit right here, Jesus. Jesus joined them. They caught all kinds of fish. Oh, sorry, sorry. All kinds of fish. See? Lots of fish once Jesus joined them. But was Jesus really talking about catching more fish? What do you think, Cohen? No, not talking about fish. He was actually wanting his disciples to fish for people, to have people come and join them. <laughs> and join and follow God and Jesus. But with Jesus' help, you can catch a lot of fish. And you can bring a lot of people to God and to Jesus. So thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. And remember to talk to your friends about God and Jesus. Where are you going?
man overboard. Bye guys. Hi, I'm Karis Brown. I'm Loya Fulberg. And I'm Maria the Friends. And we are some of the youth of Serve Our Community Week. Today's reading from the Bible is Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down my nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were parents, partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I'm so glad you're joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today as we continue in our summer series, Stories to Live By. We're lifting up stories and verses from our Bible that have become particularly meaningful for the various preachers that are leading us in worship during the summer. And I encourage you to continue to join in worship with Douglas Avenue on Sundays and the sanctuary at 11 a.m. here with online worship. You don't want to miss a single week during this wonderful uh, sharing of these stories that we're doing together. Our story to live by today is such a rich story of trust and courage and following Jesus. And it is, again, one of those stories about Jesus that shows up in one version or another in all of the Gospels in the Bible, from the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's a fishing story. It's a story of trusting Jesus, of following his instructions, of following Jesus, of becoming his disciple. For those of you who love puns, it's even got that. Instead of fishing for fish, you're going to fish for people, Jesus says. And it's certainly a story that enlivens the imagination. And I'm sure that for many of you, it's been an important story in your life of faith, too. One of the reasons I want to share this story today is because this story and this particular version from the Gospel of Luke helps me remember how important it is to have really great partners with me in my journey of life and faith, and most importantly, how much I need to let Jesus into my life every day in all of the places and in all of the ways I'm living and at work and at play. This last week at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we held our very first Youth Serve Our Community Week. For the past week, our youth and adult team has met every morning bright and early to go and do whatever it is that is needed in service with some of the amazing community organiz organizations that are here in our area. Organizations that provide help and hope in so many different ways here at home and across our world. On Monday, we worked in the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church Community Garden. On Tuesday, with the Midwest Mission Distribution Center. On Wednesday, with the Central Illinois Food Bank. And on Thursday, with our own Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And then on Friday, it was our fun day, and we went to the water park to play. Now, you got to meet many of the folks involved in Serve Our Community Week who've been providing leadership in our worship online today. And I'm so honored to have been able to spend this week with them and really proud of the work that this group did, the way they represented our church family and of the growth they showed in character and teamwork and love of others and serving and love of God in the process. 
A part of that is learning to trust your team, to trust God, to learn new skills, even when you're scared or nervous or have never done before whatever it is that it is that we're doing. And through the entire week, I think we learned that it's important to have some folks with you to do this, to work through the questions and doubts and the tiredness and the, I just don't want to do this thing. Your team can carry you and help you over the hump. Your team helps make very real the power and presence of Jesus's love and purposes for you. For a lot of years, I've been blessed to work with youth and adults in this kind of way in many different places and in many, many different kinds of ministry settings. And I'm always so inspired and encouraged in my own faith in the whole process. And that was certainly the case this past week. But I did have this rather unexpected experience on the last day of Serve Our Community Week during our time at the water park. Now, it's been a while since I've been at a water park. You know, the water park with the water slides and a wave pool and lazy river, all those things to play with and to float around in. And I admit, I have not always been really excited about going on youth group trips to water parks for all kinds of reasons. But with it being the end of Serve Our Community Week and all the good relationships and team building that we'd had during the week, we were just set up to have a great time, and we did. We had a wonderful time in the water park. We had a couple of family members join with us to help chaperone, so our age group on this last day expanded, with our youngest person being six years old and our oldest being in their mid-60s. And then for maximum and safety and fun in the water park, everyone breaks up into a group of at least three people to go out and play and we come back together about every hour to check in at our home base and to reorganize uh, for just maximum fun and having a great time in the park. Now, you should know that I have not done really anything at a water park other than play in the wave pool and float in the lazy river for like 25 years. And truthfully, on this trip, I expected to spend most of my time holding down uh, the group's home base, reading a book, and, and people watching. However, after lunch, I ended up as a part of a three-person team made up of Leah, who's going to be a senior in high school, myself, 52-year-old pastor, and Kennedy, who is six years old. We were an unlikely team. Leah and Kennedy, though, were absolutely sure that I needed to ride a water slide. I was not absolutely sure that I needed to wa ride a water slide. I did want to ride a water slide, but I was scared and really unsure. Kennedy said, I'll hold your hand. So I was off to go with them to a collection of water slides called the Bermuda Triangle. We went to the stairs and then we went up the stairs and we went up the four flights of stairs to the platform of the first water slide. Leah, being a very experienced water slider, arranged us in an order and gave me and Kennedy our, all the details of what to expect. And with an encouraging nod from Kennedy, I was off sliding and twisting and splashing and turning around and four stories of water slide into the pool at the bottom. Hooray! And then Kennedy came down. Hooray! And then Leah came down. Hooray! We're a super brave team. We did it. And so this, of course, led to more rides and different and higher water slides. We were the queens of water slides. Then, through a comedy of errors, I found myself with just Kennedy, the six-year-old, on the high platform of a water slide called the Royal Flush. It's just what the name implies. It's a fast shoot that puts you out into what looks like, for lack of a better way to put it, a toilet bowl that's huge. And the centrifugal force causes you to go around and around, and then you finally drop down the hole at the bottom into the big, deep, eight-foot pool of water. I had no intention of going down the royal flush. Uh, that was simply asking way too much uh, of me on my newly acquired water sliding skills for this day. You see, the plan was that Kennedy's grandmother would wait for her at the bottom of the ride, and I would wait with Kennedy in line, making sure she got to the water side appropriately, and send Kennedy down the royal flush. Grandma gets her at the bottom. I walk down the stairs to meet them solid plan. 
But while we were waiting for Kennedy's turn, our conversation turned again to being brave and trying new things and how good it is to have each other. And then Kennedy, the six-year-old said, I'll high five you at the end. And down the royal flush, Kennedy went. And then down the royal flush, Meredith went. Down the chute, around the bowl, and out the bottom into the deep pool, royally flushed. And then I got to enjoy the much promised high five celebration at the end. We were super brave and super awesome. And I even managed to keep both of my contact lenses in my eyes so I could drive the group home. It turns out that it's really important to have the right person with you when you're getting ready to ride water slides. In my case, this was my team of Leia and Kennedy. And particularly if you're going to go on bigger and bigger slides and into the deeper water. But really whatever it is you're doing, riding water slides, moving a pile of rocks, cleaning windows, packing food boxes, making a change, working your sobriety, doing life, it is important to have the right person with you. In our Bible story for today, Peter learns this truth in a big way, right in the middle of his everyday life. As we meet Peter in the story, he's just this ordinary guy. He's had a hard night work of fishing, which is what he does for a living, along with his partners, James and John. They had worked all night long out in their boats on the Lake of Gennesaret, fishing with nets, but they had caught no fish. And now they were back on shore cleaning up, which is a part of the work, whether you catch fish or not. Jesus gets in Peter's boat. And he asked Peter to take him out into the lake a little way from the shore so that he can teach the big crowd that had gathered. I imagine that Peter was thinking in his mind, well, okay, this is a reasonable enough request. I have my boat. It's not doing anything right now. It hasn't much helped me catch any fish tonight either, but maybe Jesus will have better luck in it with uh, teaching the crowd. And this sure seems to be the case. Jesus teaches the crowds of people from the boat, and there you go. But Jesus finishes his teaching, and there they are. Peter in his boat with Jesus. And that's when Jesus makes a little less reasonable request. Jesus says to Peter, go out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. I don't think the true meaning of this request passed Peter by. I'm willing to bet he had an inkling that something was up. Jesus had been sitting in his boat, teaching with authority and love, teaching all of the people gathered there about who God is, about the kingdom of God, about the power of God's love to change their lives and the world, and that it was time to get on board with God's purposes. Jesus had healed people, had given hope and life, and offered himself in deep connection with all that God was doing through him. And Peter witnessed all of this. After all, Jesus was doing all of this right in his boat. So Jesus turns to Peter and says, go out into the deep water and make a catch. I don't think Jesus is just talking about fishing here, do you? I think Jesus is asking Peter to do some different kind of work, to leave the shallow places in his life, in his work, in his faith, to go out into the deep waters and explore the depths, to test the limits of what he, Peter, believes is possible. Go out into the deep water and make a catch. It's a simple request. And with it, Jesus is basically saying to Peter, trust me. Go out into the deep and see what happens. I really think Peter gets what Jesus is asking him to do. And it's probably a part of why he doesn't want to follow Jesus's direction right away. I think Peter knows if he follows Jesus's instruction in his life, in his work, in his relationships, in his relationship with God, everything is going to be different for him and for those around him. So Peter's response, well, it's pretty classic. It's something that a lot of us say when Jesus asks us to follow him or to take the next step in our faith to go uh, to go deeper. We say, Jesus, I've already been out there and there's nothing there. 
I've already fished those waters. There's nothing out there to catch. I've tried to pray or read the Bible or to worship you with my whole heart or to serve as you ask me to or to encounter you and follow you in my everyday life at work, at school, doing my chores and activities. I've tried to build meaningful relationships or to change that part of myself that desperately needs changing, but I always fail. My net comes back empty. I'm tired. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough or patient enough or talented enough or religious enough or pray enough. I'm just not good enough. There's nothing out there in those deep waters for me. And if there is, there's no way that I'm going to be able to catch it anyway. Peter speaks those words of our heart, doesn't he? I've been fishing out there all night and there's nothing there for me. But you know, in spite of all that, Peter goes out anyway. And that really is the first action of a disciple, one who follows. Peter follows Jesus. Reluctantly, sullenly, maybe afraid, maybe even a bit put out. But with Jesus in his boat, he goes ahead out there into the deep water and Peter finds a seriously good catch of fish. An abundant catch, a net splitting, boat sinking catch of fish. Of course, it's not all about the fish, though that's pretty spectacular. Peter gets an even more important catch. He catches an abundant life, a purpose-filled, joyful, challenging, confusing, deep-reaching life with Jesus. For me, and one of the big reasons I carry this story in my heart is this. I think the big difference for Peter is that he lets Jesus get into his boat. When I say that, I mean Peter doesn't let just anybody into his boat, but he lets Jesus into the boat. The master teacher, healer, friend, grace-filled savior, giver of abundant life and powerful purpose. And when I say Peter lets Jesus get into his boat, it's not just some random boat, it's Peter's boat. The boat he uses every day to make his living. At this real life moment, Peter allows Jesus into his life. He is real, everyday, working man, support my family, gotta make a living, gotta get it done. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of the time it doesn't. Real life. For me, the good news of all of this is that this is exactly where Jesus longs to be with us, in our boats, in our real lives. Not the fancy dress up Saturday go to temple or Sunday go to church life, but everyday knock about grubby pants, lucky fishing hat, work a day life, our bathing suits, our yoga pants, business casual, overall coverall, scrubs, jeans, fancy sweater, hipster hat life. Right there in your life, in the midst of my life, that's where Jesus wants to be. Because Jesus loves you, the real you. Jesus loves me, the real me. Jesus sees more in our lives than we often do. Jesus sees that you're meant for more, for greater, for God's purposes, of bringing God's kingdom into reality in this place, in this time, in your life, in the lives of those around you, whatever your age or place may be. Jesus is there to energize you, empower you, remind you that you are his, that you are precious and beloved and capable and amazing and empowered beyond what you think is possible. Because that is who Jesus is. And when you follow him, that is who you are. That's who I am, wherever it is you are, at your desk, on your water slide, in your boat, in the hospital room, in the field, in your classroom, or in your workroom. Jesus is right there in the middle of it with you saying, follow me. Let's go deeper. Let's go further. Let's bring the kingdom of God right here, right now. And who better to do that with than Jesus? Amen. Please join us in singing, Lord, you have come to the lakeshore.
morning. My name is Cindy Arnold, and I became a member at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church last weekend. I'm so grateful for the warm welcome you've all given me. I'm also a part of the Young Adult Sunday School class, and I work in the community garden, and I've been helping out with the youth this week as well. Would you join me in prayer? Good morning, Lord. We come to you today from all kinds of experiences in the past week, joyful and sad, exciting and disappointing, peaceful and stressful. And for some of us, we've felt all of those things already just today. Lord, we are grateful that no matter what is going on in our lives, you wanna be with us. You are with us. You remind us that if we seek you out, we will find you. You're there every time. Now granted, sometimes your presence is more evident than other times. And so we ask you, Lord, that you help us know your presence in an undeniable way today. Lord, we thank you for your presence and for the way that you often love us through other people in our lives. Thank you for inviting us to be a part of that loving outreach to the world too. We saw an excellent example of sharing your love through service during the youth groups Serve Our Community Week this last few days. Thank you for each person who participated, both youth and youthful at heart. And we pray that the people who receive the products of that work feel your love oh so clearly. Lord, we continue to ask you that you bring healing to our world. Healing for those suffering from COVID, from addictions, from other illnesses, from injustice. Lord, we ask for your healing in a multitude of ways, some personal and individual and some systemic. And although it is harder, we ask that you show us how we can be your hands and feet in that healing process too. How we can each bring love and wholeness and healing to those around us. Lord, give us courage and strength for those tasks too. Lord of the sunshine and the rain alike, help us to come closer to you now as we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. During his song in the hit musical Hamilton, Aaron Burr, sings of his desire to be in the room where it happens. It's a common inclination. Which one of us wouldn't want to be in the place where the action is? Yet for too many in the Christian church, there is a misapprehension that a room like this is the room where it happens. And nothing could be farther from the truth. We learn that the church is not a place. It is not a room. A church is a people loving God and loving and serving their neighbors. And through your action and your giving for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, you are placing this church and yourself in the rooms where it happens. Where are these rooms? One of them is in the paint room up at Wouldn't It Be Lovely in our education building a place where young associates are changing the trajectory of their lives and the lives of their families by building for themselves a better life. Another place is the Central Illinois Food Bank, a place where volunteers from the DAUMC youth group spent time this week sorting food so that it can be given out to help serve others in need. A third place, is in the classrooms of Camp Compass, where 650 elementary school students from District 186 are keeping their skills honed and getting a head start on the next educational year, thanks to money and volunteers from Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. There are other rooms where it happens also throughout the community, everything from Boy Scouts to Habitat for Humanity, to many other places in our community. Time and time again, volunteers from DAUMC step forward and put their faith into action and put their money where their mouth is in order to make sure 
that we are serving God and loving and serving our neighbors. Your donations to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church help fund all of these projects and so many more. As you know from our announcements each week, there are many ways in which you can donate to DAUMC. You can go to our website, www.douglasavenue.org, and make an online donation through the online giving portal. It's easy and it's quick. You can use your bank's automatic bill pay system to send a monthly check into Douglas Avenue. You can call the church office and talk to Jesse, and he will help you set up an ACH automatic bank draft using our bank. And of course, you can always send your check to the church or bring it here to the sanctuary on Sunday morning for our 11 o'clock in-person worship service and leave it in the box at the front of the church. The weeks to come are going to be busy ones for Douglas Avenue, even as the summer is dying down. Tomorrow evening, Monday, July 26th, is going to be our next edition of Vital Conversations on Race. The topic is going to be the highly acclaimed PBS documentary, Freedom Riders, the story of those who risked their lives in the 1960s to ride for the cause of racial equality. You can watch the video on your own following the link in the e-newsletter and then dial in to the Zoom call on Monday night at 6.30. If you need the link, just call the church office and we'll have an in-depth discussion of that wonderful and insightful documentary. In addition, the ladies of Wouldn't It Be Lovely are going to have a very busy fall. Whether it be Lemonade for Love later this month, the Little Black Dress fundraiser, the annual WIBL golf outing, or Wouldn't It Be Lovely's fabulous showcase sale, which is going to be held in October. All of those dates are available in your e-newsletter. Make sure you write them down because you're not going to want to miss any of those events. Speaking of the e-newsletter, if you haven't signed up for it, you're not getting the full picture of what's happening at Douglas Avenue. Take time today to sign up. You can follow the link to the online contact form that's in this morning's online worship. Or you can call the church office and Jesse will be happy to add you to the list. But no matter how you give, no matter how you become active, I want to thank you for placing yourself and this church in the room where it happens. God bless you. Please join us in singing Blessed Assurance. Thank you.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just pray that this whole experience has been uplifting and meaningful for you, that you will join with us again for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 11. I encourage you again to use that contact form to remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go to our pastors and to our prayer team, and that you remember to put that your email address on that so that we can connect with you. We want to connect with you and be a part of your life of faith. So please use that contact form so that we can do that with you. And now as you go into your day, go remembering that God loves you completely, that Jesus wants to be a part of your everyday life, helping you, encouraging, encouraging you and leading you deeper into the fullness of who you are. And go knowing that the Holy Spirit leads and guides and empowers you to be all of that. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.